joining in. Um, just a few house cleaning items. If it, this is the first time that you're joining our weekly webinars, um, first and foremost, today is Thursday, September 4th. So happy Thursday to all of you. And um, for those of you that, you know, again, are new to this this platform, um, at the end of the webinar, we do have an open forum. So if you have questions, you can get them answered, hopefully, or ask them amongst the group either by raising your hand, uh, just clicking on the little hand icon on your control panel to the right of your screen, or you can type in your question uh, in the question box, and we'll read those at the end of the webinar. So without further ado, um, the, this is a reminder that we've had um, the past seminar or webinars in that the FFM certification for 2014 expires on September 30th. So for those that certified for the selling season, the open enrollment period, you must do your 2015 certification by September 30th so you don't have a loss of your certification. The 2015 certification will carry you through um, past or through the end of 2014 and then of course through the 2015 selling season. For those of you that uh, were on last week's webinar, there was a discussion about whether the Health America One and Aetna grandmothering until the end of December was a qualifying event. And I still feel very comfortable saying that it is not a qualifying event. Um, you know, our, our carriers uh, feel the same way. Um, it, it does seem that they're it, off exchange there might be a little bit of wiggle room um, for some carriers, but none of the carriers that we represent are offering this. So um, for those Health America One and Aetna renewals that are coming up for 10-1, 11-1, and 12-1, and, and this is a correction as well, the plan, the non-ACA grandmothered Health America One plan will, or Aetna plan, will remain in effect until 1231. There will not be a deductible reset and there will not be an increase in premium. So essentially their contract year is extended until 1231 and then of course um, either open enrollment for 1115 or you know by 1231 they can um, use that qualifying event to get coverage, ACA coverage, for 1-1. One, one. Um, Health America is auto mapping the, their renewals for 1-1 one, one to the same plan that they're auto mapping today, which is the bronze 2015 ACA plan. Um, so again, just be mindful of the date and uh, take advantage of reaching out to your clients and informing them of this information. As we mentioned last week, the 12-1 early renewals for groups are being released. We did release the Highmark group. Health America has released the grandmothered rate for 12-1, but we're still waiting on the ACA rate and options for 12-1. As you work through these early renewals, please keep in mind that we're here to help you. Um, you know, we can talk strategy specific to your group but you're definitely going to want to explore not only what the non-ACA options are and possibly go that route, um, or look at an ACA option either on, on shop or off. Um, and you're also going to want to look at individual, I would imagine, for some of your groups. Um, no matter what route you take, we're here to help you. We're here to strategize with you. And, you know, again, part of that strategy should include an ancillary line, whether it's an individual or group, because as time goes on, deductibles are increasing, premiums are going to be increasing, so it's, I suspect that many people are going to be taking um, a lesser benefit plan, possibly even a bronze type plan, and they're going to need, um, you know, some, some underlying plan to help assist with those deductible costs. So again, let us help you strategize and get you the rates and all the information you need for every group that you have, because we're happy to help you. Highmark individual plans, um, I say keep watching, because um, 
you know, this is not, there's nothing official that was sent out, but there will be information that is going to be coming out about their grandmothering or lack thereof provisions for their non-ACA individually medically underwritten program. In other words, um, more than likely they will all term 1231. They're coming up with a unique sort of um, uh, campaign so that you're aware of, of the renewals coming in and uh, so that they help capture those those people hopefully back to Highmark in their opinion and then also maintain you as the agent. So I'll have more information on that as we get closer to 1231 but um, just you know again as the slide says keep watching because there will be information forthcoming. Many of you um, and in my newsletter today are going to see about the Pennsylvania Medicaid expansion and it is Healthy PA that's the name of the the program. It is going to be available starting 12-1 for sale for a January 1st effective date. And this fact sheet is going to also be in my newsletter, so just take some time and read it. I've reached out to the carriers to see how they're going to be working with these products uh, uh, for the Healthy PA, if agents can be a part of that. And I also have a message in for the Pennsylvania Insurance Department to find out um, a little bit more. We're certainly early in the process, but 12-1 is going to come and go um, before we even can blink our eyes. This is, you know, again, just a, a bit of a fact sheet, and um, it is, the, this is the information on the healthy PA. It promotes healthy behaviors, ensures that benefits match health needs, implement, implement a strategy for sustainable um, for sustainability by aligning the current Medicaid program with private health care markets and increased health care access for more than 600,000 eligible Pennsylvanias, Pennsylvanians. We would love to have an opportunity to, um, you know, be part of that. I just don't know that we're going to. But uh, it's essentially it's going to expand coverage for Medicaid up to 133% of the FPL. As we all know, today with PA not expanding for 2014, if you're 100 to 400%, you can get a subsidy. If you are not, if you're below that and not, uh, not with you know, the lack of income to qualify you for Medicaid at this point, you're in this black hole. Well, with the expansion, it's going to go the whole way up from current guidelines for children and adults up to 133%. So definitely an expansion, and um, you know, I, I do think that there's some value in the way this was presented. But at the end of the day, it's an expansion of Medicaid, and we all know what that means. Um, so good, bad, or indifferent. So again, um, it says, how can I apply for health coverage? And it's talking about the outlet. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I don't know if we're going to be a part of it, but again, we have to at least be aware that it's out there and what we can do to assist um, you and your consumers. Another uh, article that's going to be in my newsletter is the affordability testing, and there was a, an interesting article that came out oh, a month or so ago about the uh, group affordability testing being, um, well, let me back up. The affordability testing for group health means that if an employer passes, the employer cannot pass on more than 9.5% of the employee's W-2 income for the single only premium on the lowest cost plan offered. I know that's very convoluted, but there was an article that essentially expanded that testing to 9.56. However, it doesn't appear that there's any uh, official regs to back that up or that it addresses the safe harbors. Um, so as it stands now, when you're going out to these 12-1 renewals, when an employer is looking on how he, he or she is distributing the, in, the, the premiums to the employees, they really have to still be mindful not to exceed 9.5% of the W-2 income for that single only premium. Um, of course, the dependent premium for spouse and children can be passed on to the employee at full cost, uh, either pre or post tax. But um, 
you know, again, it's a bit of a, a confusing uh, scenario. If you have additional questions on that, please feel free to reach out to me. And uh, we are still moving forward with the web broker contract. We are crossing our fingers every day. We have weekly conference calls with our vendor, uh, making sure that we're on track to be up and running 1115. Um, so we are anticipating that we will be up and running uh, to compare on and off exchange and redirect to healthcare.gov. But uh, just in case, we are working on a solution. So one way or the other, we will have a platform for you um, for your enrollment. So that pretty much brings us up to date with uh, all of the items on the agenda. And uh, it does look like we have some questions. So I'm going to go right to questions. Again, if you want to raise your hand and uh, ask questions live, feel free to do so. Um, Jim says, He's finishing his individual certification. At the last step, submit privacy and security agreement. It says to exit at the bottom after agreeing to the complete to complete the next step. There is no exit at the bottom, so I cannot finish the step. Do you have a phone number for help with these types of problems? And unfortunately, we do not. There is no one that can help you on that marketplace platform. Um, I would. I would look at the very top, the top right-hand screen. That's where what we suggest is clicking next until you can't, until there is not a next there. And then up at the top, there's either a white X and a black circle or the actual exit icon. Um, that's how we've been exiting out. And it seems to work this year that it doesn't um, you know, eliminate your test results. So Jim, I would try that. And uh, at this point, there doesn't appear to be too many more questions. In fact, there are no more questions. So I'll give you a few minutes. Oh, here's one. Give you a few minutes to type those in. Um, again, next week, our webinar, as we do every Thursday, 930, will be September 11th at 930. And I hope you can join us then. Um, Cindy says, 50 to 99 employee groups have until 2016 to comply with ACA as long as they meet certain criteria. What if a current 50 to 99 employer does not have a health care plan in place? Will they be eligible for the delay, or will they have to, to comply with the mandate for 1-1? Um, no. The, for 50 to 99, there are the employer mandate or the employer responsibility mandate, meaning that they have to have minimum essential coverage in place, has been delayed until 2016. So I will, I'll get um, additional information on that, Cindy, but um, I've not read anything that says they have to at least have coverage until then, um, because there, there's no penalty that would be assessed. So um, my feeling is that, that uh, they don't have to have coverage in place. Again, I will do a little bit more research and circle back around with you, Cindy, and then also uh, bring that up on next week's webinar so we can all hear it. So looks like all the questions are, are answered um, or asked. And again, I, I appreciate you joining in every week. And thank you so much for your business and your partnership. And uh, look forward to speaking with you again next week. Until then, have a great day, great Friday, and a great weekend. Bye-bye.